the one. So Ryan, come on up and, and, and tell a little bit what's happened in your, in, in your, as you began the year and then how we said, hey, we need to do this. Hey, good morning, church. How are you this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. So good to see you this morning. Well, as Pastor Brown was telling you guys, we started this morning. Um, I don't know if you remember the last Sunday of the, of the year as, as Pastor Brown was baptizing Abby and I kind of ended the service. And I just wanted to pray for you as we ended 2020 and as we kind of launched into 2021. I prayed, I prayed a verse in Psalm 68 verse 1 and I said, let God arise and prayed over our ministries and prayed over our family and prayed over the church. Well, anyway, I kind of latched onto that personally in my own life and um, just took that into 2021. And so obviously, as kind of most people do, most church, you know, it's kind of the thing to kind of launch into a fast. And so we could, Jenny and I made that our, fa our fast verse, just wanting to let God arise and let our enemies be scattered and just wanting to see that in our marriage, wanting to see that in our ministry, wanting to see that in our church, wanting to see that in our ministries here at the church. And so when Pastor Brown said, you know, what's going on? You know, do you have any, what's God doing in your life? And I said, we're just praying, let God arise, let his enemies, enemies be scattered, let our enemies be scattered, anger, depression, all those things. We don't want to see any Amen. of that stuff in Amen. 2021. And so we just last on to that as a church, let God arise here, let our enemies be scattered. You know, so if you just look at that first word, let. Let me ask you this. Why are you here this morning? Right? Why did we wake up this morning, put on clothes, do our hair? It took us some longer to do our hair more than others, right? We are here to see God in some way, shape, or form. Amen. Right? We want to have an experience with God. So this morning, let's let God arise and let his enemies be scattered, Amen. right? So that's just something and a focus that we want to have happen Amen. here at the church in our ministry. So Amen. Lead Pastor us in Brown. prayer. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lead us in prayer. Hallelujah. Lord, here we go. Lord, have your way in our Amen. people. Have your way in this church. Have your way in our ministries, Father. We want to let you arise, Father, in our ministries, in our families, Father. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God, and we, you will draw near to us. Lord, we latch on to that promise as well, Father. So we don't want to lose any time, Father, right now, Lord. So as we draw near to you, Lord, draw near to us, Lord. We want to allow you to arise in our life, Father. And when you do, our enemies scattered, Father. Sometimes yes. we make it so complicated, but it's really not, Lord. So we've taken time, Lord, to get ready. We've put on clothes. We've brushed our teeth. We've come here, Lord, not to sit and observe, but to partake in something powerful. Amen. and worship, Lord. So I pray, Father, that you would arise in our lives, in our family, in our ministry, in our church, in our city, Father, in our state, Lord, that you would arise, Lord. And when you do, enemies scatter, anger Amen. scatter, Father. Amen. Depression scatters, anxiety scatter, Father. Lord, I pray, God, that we would not hold back, that we Amen. would not shrink back, Father, uh -huh. but we would take advantage, Lord, of this time in worship and prayer and the word, Lord, that, we, that you would arise, Father, in a yes. mighty, mighty way yes. in our lives, Father. Lord, I come yes. against depression, Lord. I come yes. against excuses, Father, in Jesus' yes. name. Amen. Have your way in this place, Lord. Arise Amen. in a mighty way in Jesus' yes. name. And everyone said... Amen. And everyone said, Amen. And if you receive that, say, Amen. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May God's peace be with you. Please be seated. Bless you. Bless you. We continue to worship the Lord uh, uh, this morning. We're going to ask our ushers if they will uh, ready themselves. And we want to receive an offering in just a, just a moment. But to some of the uh, things that we'd like to uh, bring to your attention, if you're a guest, glad to have you today. And please fill out a, a guest card so that we can have a record of your visit. To, they're available at our uh, hospitality desk there in uh, the lobby. 
couple things that are coming up. We have a couple's event uh, in a couple weeks, three weeks, and uh, we want you to be part of that. A good friend of ours, Joe Phillips, is coming back, and uh, he's always a joy to have, and God has done some marvelous things in his life, and he shares his testimony, and it's just a great time. Ladies and men have been meeting on Wednesday nights. We've had some uh, increase each week as, we're, as we get back into our uh, Wednesday night ministry, and we'd like to invite you to, to be part of that as well. And our kids are, are back, and we have some boys and girls, and if you have children, you, uh, grandchildren, you want them involved in our girls' and boys' ministry here. These, these leaders are working very hard to encourage you, and of course, the youth have their activities and other things that are going on. I've encouraged you to um, choose a word for 2021, and uh, if you uh, haven't done so, do so, because next week I'm going to give you an opportunity to just write that word down and, and, to, and to say, this is what I'm going to be focusing on for this year, and asking God to, that this may be seen, grown, developed uh, uh, in my life, and so I'm working on my word. I think I have it, and I'm just want to, I'll have it convinced. I'll have myself convinced to say, uh, through prayer, this is what I want to uh, uh, to do. Those of you who have been on uh, Facebook with us, we uh, had I know we had a little delay at the beginning, but uh, it's glad to have you with us, back with us, and and uh, God bless you. And may God's presence be with you. I hope you sense a little what we've been sensing uh, in, this, uh, in this room this morning. I want to draw your attention to this verse of Scripture. In fact, three verses of Scripture that we want to talk about on this theme that uh, Pastor Ryan and myself are going to be talking about and sharing over these next uh, uh, number of weeks uh, I'm going to speak this week on Let God Arise. He's going to talk next week on it, and then I'll come back again uh, in uh, the week after that. And, and so we're doing a, a three-week series on this Let God Arise. Now, you can see it either uh, on the screen or in your Bibles in Psalm 68, 1 through 3. This is a, uh, a psalm that we will see in a moment, uh, the author of the psalm, and even the, the moment and the time in which this psalm was actually uh, shared and, and, and spoken. But listen to verses 1 through 3 as I read them. Let God arise, it says, and let his enemies be scattered. Let those also who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. In verse number three, but let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them rejoice exceedingly. What wonderful words in this particular psalm. And so when I read this, I, I, say to, I said to myself, okay, who said it? When was it said? And why was it said? And so as I looked at it, the first thing I said, okay, David is the one that said it. And perhaps some of your Bibles might even record that, that David said it. And, and then I said, okay, when did he say this? He said this when they were bringing the ark back actually for the first time to Jerusalem to set it there in the tabernacle or the tent that David had set up. And then I asked, why would he say this? Why? Because this was a significant moment in the life of Israel. The ark would be placed back in the center of God's people. So much to say about that, that church, but it would be in the center of the life of Israel again. It would be in its proper place again. But what is this ark, this sacred symbol that David brought and caused him to, to shout the way he did and declare the way he did and make this statement? After Israel was delivered from Egypt, in, we see this in the book of Exodus. God instructed Moses in Exodus to prepare a place 
where worship could take place with his people. Up until this point, it, it had not happened. And so he instructed him on, on building a tent or a tabernacle, and then he told them there's furniture that he wants to put in this tabernacle. Those of you who have studied this know there were seven pieces of furniture that was to be built, uh, anything from a, from a basin to a, uh, uh, like a candelabra, though it actually burned oil. Uh, and then there was this ark, this box. This the most important piece was called the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, it was a box about oh, almost four foot long a little more than two foot wide and, and, and about two foot deep. And on it, it had a lid, and on that lid, those of you who are familiar with this know that there were some angels that were on the lid of this ark, carved angels on the lid of this ark. And what was so important about it is that ark represented to Israel the presence of God. The presence of God. And, and once the ark was built and the tabernacle was built, it would travel with Israel wherever it went. Made it all the way to the promised land. And in fact, it was established. The tent was set up. The, all these pieces of furniture were put in the tent. And for some 400 plus years, it was there. It was there most of the time in Shiloh where Joshua had set it up. But it was so important. If you remember the story of them crossing uh, the, 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 the Jordan River and, and, when, the, and when the feet of the, of the priests who were carrying the ark touched the waters, the waters opened up. And when they got to, to Jericho, they took the ark and marched around the city carrying the ark. Those seven days and the victory that God gave to them as a... As a result, the, the journey of the ark is really a, um, a marvelous story, and, and I, had to, <laughs> I had to keep myself from wanting just to take, take you on that journey uh, because there's just so many interesting aspects of it. A book, a thesis, a doctorate could be written on the journeys. But this right here that we just read about in Psalms, this moment is very, very significant as we noted. See, the ark was there with God's people for centuries, as we said. But it was taken into battle near the end of the time of the judges, and it was captured by the Philistines. The children of Israel had drifted away from God. And as a result of their behavior, and, and they begin to treat the ark as if it was kind of like a lucky charm. And so they took it in the battle, and it seemed like it rallied the Israeli soldiers for, for a moment of time. But it also strengthened the Philistines, and they rose up, and they took the ark, and they took it into their territory. And they had it for about seven months. It was bad news for the Philistines to have the ark. You read that account in Samuel, 2 Samuel. Uh, they, it was, it, sickness, tumors, all kinds of things happened. And finally, after the seventh month period, they shipped it back to the territory of Israel. But it never made it back to its proper place until this moment that we are reading about now. See, David would bring it into the city. He would place it in a tabernacle. And then later it would be placed into the temple that Solomon would build. But for 70 years from the time of Eli when it was lost to, until the time David brought it back into the center of God's people, it had been just at a place or two during that time and not where it needed to be, not where God had intended it to be. The ark was important to Israel. Very important to David. And these three verses kind of sum this up. Because you can almost hear God, uh, David saying, once God is in his proper place, his enemies are going to be removed and his people are going 
to rejoice. David just knew that if God could get in the center of his people, things would change. Boy, doesn't that speak volumes to us? If God can get in the center of our life, your life, my life, when he is in the center of our life, what a difference it makes. We say, God, we want you in the center of our life. David wanted that so much. Listen to a prayer of his in Psalms 132, 1 through 5. You you get a a capture, a a little glimpse of the heart of David. And this is what it says, and I think we have it, uh, the words there uh, on the screen for you. But Psalms 132, verses 1 to 5. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. How he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob, surely I will not go into the chamber of my house or go up to the comfort of my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes nor slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Israel. He so wanted God in his proper place. And that symbol of God's presence to the children of Israel was the Ark of the Covenant. And it was aside. It was set aside. Oh, it was in a safe place. And, and for the most part, that's where it stayed for that 70-year period. But as soon as David conquered Jerusalem, as soon as he established that place in the center of Israel, as soon as he did that, he had been king shortly. He had been king seven years in, in Hebron, but now he was king over all of Israel. And the thing that he wanted most of all is for God to be in the center God, that that object, that box that meant so much to Israel, that meant the presence of God, it was sacred. It wasn't something to be trifled with. Those of you who have read and know, and and when it was put into the the tabernacle, you know how it was covered by a veil. When it was put into the temple, it was covered by the veil. It wasn't something that you were careless about because the presence of God, God is so important, and David knew that, and he desired that for the children of Israel and for his own life. And so we read this psalm here, 68, where he says, let God arise. And I said, as I was just trying to work through this in my own heart, why why is that so important? Why was that so important to David? Why why is that important to us if God arises? If we would say in our own life, as we would say for our families, as we would say for our church, as we would say for our community, as we would say for our nation, for our world, God, let beauty arise. Arise, God. Because when God arises, something happens. Something happens. And so I said, as I worked through this, I said, God arising is important, was important to them, and it's important to us because of the praise that was expressed. Because of the praise that was expressed. It is, it is so interesting, so interesting, because what David said was something Moses had said centuries ago. Before. This is the phrase from Numbers chapter 10 and verse number 35. And, and every time Israel would set out with the tabernacle, which was portable, they would take it apart and they begin to move as the cloud moved, and they would take the ark and they would begin to move. And this is what Moses said. So it was. When the ark set out, That Moses said, rise up, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered, and let those who hate you flee before you. And when it rested, he said, return, O Lord, to the many thousands of Israel. Be with your people. And so when Moses would move and the ark would move 
and the tabernacle would move, Moses would make that declaration, rise up, O God. We're moving forward. Let your enemies be scattered. Some 400 years later plus, David, knowing what Moses had said, knowing what had been spoken and how important it was when that ark was going to be leading, that ark was going to be in its pr a proper place, he said the very same thing that Moses said. Oh, initially David messed up. He um, tried to bring the ark in on the cart. You remember the story. And it was costly. Then... Um, he got it right, and he had it carried by the Levites, the sect of the Levites that were assigned to do it, where it be carried on their shoulders by a pole. And when that was right, and it started headed toward Jerusalem, and David knew he got it right, you see how he responds in 2 Samuel chapter 6. Verses 13 through 18. This is, this, is, this is so much because what did I say? I say it's important. It was important to David and it can be important to us because of the praise that was expressed. That This was no, no, no ordinary day. And we say, oh God, visit us in such a way. May your presence be so strong. May, may you be such centered in our hearts that, that a praise beyond what perhaps we have praised in a long time would take place. Watch what happens here. You know where I'm going, some of you. It says in verse number 13, so it was. When those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, we're just starting out. Six paces that he, being David, sacrificed oxen, fatted sheep. Then David danced before the Lord with all of his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. That, that's that's the, the servant clothes of a, of a, of a Levite. That's their, that would be their standard clothes. That's what he, he had on. And so David and, and all of the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with a sound of the trumpet. Did you catch that? So David and all of the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting. And with the sound of the trumpet, oh, this was huge. Now the ark came, as the ark came into the city, David, the city of David, Micah, Saul's daughter, looked through the window and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord. You think he was excited? Oh, my. She despised him in her heart. So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place. It could just be a period right there. And set it in its place. In the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for it. And then David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And when David had finished the offerings and the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. David could not contain the joy that was in his heart. He offered sacrificed sacrifices and then he danced before the Lord with all of his might. I don't find any other place in scripture that David did that. This, this, was, the, this was the only time that I've seen it. Nothing before or after. But there was this explosion of, of praise and joy. And, and David could not help but say, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Quoting Moses again saying, let God be honored. Let God be honored. Let God be honored. Oh, my. Seeing God honored was the joy of David's heart. I don't even know how to capture fully you know, when you do something with all of your might. 
all of your might. I'm, I'm, you know, like some of you, I am a sports person, and, and I overroot for my fans. I overroot. I, I, so I'm, I have to have my friends call me from other states to tell me what the score is because I cannot even watch the game. I, I, I am so, I can be so involved in it. But, and I remember saying to myself, son, you know, that same excitement that you give for a score or for a victory, couldn't you give that to God and even more? And I said, yeah, I could, and I should. Uh, and, and for those of you not in the sports, I know it's kind of hard to click that, but what is it that, that you, would, you would do with all of your might? All of your... I, What's left when you do something with all of your might? <laughs> you've, you've, you've done it. You've done it with all of your might. It's, he did it with everything. Da David did it with everything he had. Everything he had. Let God arise. And we want that to see that in our situations. When God arises... And, and, and works in circumstances that we have been asking for. More on that in a moment, but, but there should be that, that praise that is, that is so high, so high, so high. What, what moves us to this kind of expression? See, for David, it was the presence of God. That's what moved David. God in his proper place. Move David to express himself in that way. But seeing God arise, secondly, is important because the prayer, because the prayer extended. When, when, when we read there in Psalms for David, in, in, in that Psalms 132, he's saying, Rem remember me. Re remember that great commend uh, a commandment or a commitment that I had to see you honored. David knew that when God was honored, something was going to happen. He knew first. He knew when God is lifted up, the first thing was going to happen, that his enemies were going to be broken into God pieces. It says scattered. The word scattered, the word scattered means to be broken like pieces of dust. Poof. Not, not just scattered so they can regroup at some time again. No. Scattered that they never can be regrouped again. They can never come back again. That's the kind of victory you notice that it's his enemies and not necessarily ours. Sometimes we can get confused in who our enemies are. But, but regardless, regardless, when God's enemies are crushed to powder, we experience the victory too. And so we want to say, God, be lifted up because your enemy is crushed to powder, to powder. It, you, you got to step back again to, to Moses' account when, when they came out of Egypt for a moment again. And, and listen to what God uh, told the, the, the people through Moses uh, about what was happening and, and, the, and, and what would take place from this moment on. It, it is one of these uh, incredible thoughts in Exodus chapter 14 and verse number 13. And this is what it says. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Watch this phrase. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you, will, you shall see again no more forever. What a statement. Never again. No more forever. That scattering Enemies like dust. What do you think of an enemy, an issue, something that has just caused so much grief that God crushes it, blows it away, 
and it's never again, no more, forever. Wow, the power, the power of that. And that, that happens when God arises. He crushes his enemy. And, and then the second thing that takes place is really kind of a natural byproduct of this because the second thing that happens is that his people rejoice. Did, did you capture those, those, those first words? Verse number three, it says this, but let the righteous be glad. One, let them rejoice before God. Two, yes, yay, absolutely. Let them rejoice exceedingly. Exceedingly, again. Okay, be glad. Yes, he's made us glad. Rejoice, yes. Oh, come on. Rejoice exceedingly. Oh. <laughs> you think about things in your life. Things in your life. Rejoice exceedingly. 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 I suppose, you know, God giving you a child, a baby, or grandbaby, or something like that. Uh, Jess and I would always chuckle about the Flintstones. And when uh, uh, Barney and Fred went to the nursery, and, uh, you know, these two guys, they're a little slow. And uh, they went to the nursery, and they looked in, into the nursery, and there were all kinds of babies. And Barney says to, to, to Fred, Fred, you hit the jackpot! <laughs> he got all of those babies. And some guys would say, can we just do this one at a time? You know what I mean? Uh, how excited we get when God does something of that nature. What moves us? See, when God arises, it says we'll be glad, we'll rejoice, and we'll be exceedingly, exceedingly glad. Our joy is connected to our praise, church. Our joy is connected to our praise. And maybe because we are not praising him, we may not be experiencing the joy that we, that he has for us. David wanted God to be praised and his people to be full of gladness. Oh, isn't that all of our hearts? God be praised. Please be praised. And let your people be full of joy. There is so much heaviness in our world. There's so many disappointments that we face. So many things that, that rob us and pull from us and, and try to dissipate us. And, and all of the struggles that all of us face and will face. You know, it, there is that that, that, is, that is just part of living and life. But in the midst of that, we can have the joy of the Lord. And it's that kind of joy that gives us strength to keep moving forward. It's that kind of joy that does something on the inside of us and keeps us moving in the direction of the Lord. One more thing here. Seeing God arise is important. Because of the potential envisioned. Prayers can be answered. Just pause for a moment. And think of God answering some of those prayers that you have lifted up for somebody for a long, long time. You've kept bringing them before the Lord. Maybe it's a person a family member, and can you imagine, envision the potential? Can you see that? Can you see them kneeling with their hands raised, giving God glory, giving God glory, seeing them surrender, fall on their face and say, God, have mercy on me. Oh, we would say, oh, could it be? Oh, let it be. Let it be in my family. Let it 
be in my church. Let it be with my friends. Let it be with my country. God, arise. God, arise. The, 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 the potential of what, what his presence can do because there's just no substitute seeing people surrender to God. I surrender all. I surrender all. In seeing them surrender, seeing that situation, that difficult situation that you've had to deal with, that again and again, and you've had to deal with it, and seeing God step in and change that. Seeing him step in. When God arises, his enemies are scattered. And we can believe that God will work in our lives. I want to see that from our children to our seniors, that we would experience and see God like we haven't seen in a long, long time. God, move among us. Move among us. Move in us. That we'll be driving down the street and the conviction and the presence of God will come over us and we'll just start weeping and have to pull over and say, God, I surrender to you. I surrender to you. I surrender to you. I've told you about my cousin who's gotten saved in, in, in recent months. And, and Larry is his name. And, and I hope to have him with us or in a few months, have him visit us in a few months and to share his testimony. But he says he sits in his car and he just, the presence of God just comes over him. And he just begins to weep and to weep and to weep. And, and, and his wife is not on the same page. And he's saying, God, you got to slow down because she's going to come back and think that something's wrong with me. Please. And, and, and God just is overwhelming him, overwhelming him. And that is an answer to my aunt's prayer. And she's been gone 10 years. But see, the potential envisioned as we pray and God continues to work in our situations. Oh, God, that's what we want. That's what we want, that there would be conviction in, our, in this place. There would be conviction in, in, in our lives. There would be conviction that we would go along and, and we would see people and begin to talk to them and the Holy Spirit would come upon them and, and they would begin to break down because of the power of God. Oh, lives could be changed. Could be changed. That's what happens when God arises. And so we say, Lord, may on, on this site, on this campus, may you be honored. May, you be, may we be fully alive with your presence. May there be testimony after testimony that we'd have to say, look, we're going to have to just have a night of testimony. Amen. We're just going to have a night of testimony, and we're going to give you three minutes because we have so many. Amen. Because God's presence, God is arising. Let that, will you pray for that to take place? Would you pray for that to happen? Because lives lay, eternity lays in the balance of it. May we be overwhelmed with joy because of his presence. And finally, when God is in the center of my life, your life, our life, our lives, anything can happen. Let God arise. Amen? Amen. Father, we praise you this morning as we just want to say, you are our God and there is none above you. Holy is your name. And as David couldn't rest until you had that place, you were in that proper place, may we be stirred. 
may we be uncomfortable until we say, God, be in the center of our lives, be in the center of my life, be in the center of our church, be in the center of God, our situations, Lord. Arise, arise, God, arise and let your enemies be shattered to dust, we pray for your glory because this is eternity that we are talking about. And this is what we desire. Hallelujah. 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 We want to move into a, a time of communion church, praying, thanking the Lord, knowing that uh, what this represents to you and I. And gentlemen, if you would make a, a trip up the aisle and make sure that anyone who did not receive the elements could uh, do so, so that they can share with us in the uh, receiving of communion this morning. So if you need the communion, they'll, they'll be up and down here so you can have that opportunity. This is special for us because it represents the Lord. We, uh, we pause regularly and say, God, be honored. God, be praised because we recognize that as we've already sung this morning that the, the cross has the final word. Jesus said, in Paul quoting him, it's as, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he comes again. What the cross has done for us. Before we, uh, we do that, uh, I'm going to, Barb's going to pray for our communion today. But Barb, I'd like for you to come and, and um, you've been on a little journey and some of us know about uh, some of your journey. But as you would want to just share a few remarks before you pray for communion. Well, church, I want to tell you how much I love you. I got tissues here because I think I'll need them. Uh, last year, I was doing so much. And um, there was a point where I guess it turned and I started doing things. And it, it kind of crowded out my personal time with the Lord. And I asked for your forgiveness. That opened my heart to things that shouldn't have been open to and so I'm sorry but it happened but you know what the church was there praying for me each of you are part of my root system and you cried out to the Lord on behalf of me when I wasn't crying out for myself so I say thank you and I love you and then there was a point in time when I cried out to the Lord and he heard my plea his ears were open, and he said, yes, yes, I am going to rescue you. And since that moment in time, I've shut off my cable. I have put myself on a fast. I, I am just seeking the Lord with all my heart. Um, the sermon says, let God arise. Well, I am taking that time right now and saying, God, arise in my life. And so I'm not stepping back in where I stepped out. Um, I am doing first things first. I am seeking the Lord in all that he wants to teach me. He says he will train me because I'm a son or a daughter that he is pleased with. And he's pleased with me because I came to him. I came to him and said, forgive me. I came to him. I said, you know, teach me take me back into your presence and so I'm leaping and dancing all this time and I say thank you again and then um, I'm also just doing what the simple thing he told me to do and that is pray with people because I love doing that I love just reaching out and telling people I love them and I love doing the simple thing he's called me to do so 
I thank you for your love again. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for praying with me. Um, I just want us to pray right now. And as I pray, whether you're at home or in the sanctuary, if you have a need in your heart um, for forgiveness, I needed forgiveness. I needed my sins removed. Um, if you need forgiveness, raise your hand wherever you are. If you need healing, raise your hand wherever you are. God sees. If yes, you need does. provision, Amen. you need a job, yes. or you want to stand in behalf of somebody else, just raise your hand just so God sees you. Dear Heavenly Father, we say yes and amen. We stir up the prayers of the saints who have gone before us, God, for healing, for salvation, God, for restoration, God, for revival in our land, God, for our leaders, for the nations, God, for the missionaries. We stir up those prayers, God. We know that your ear is not deaf, God. We are the no, we know that you're the God who sees, Lord, for those people who have struggled in illness or injuries in their body for years and years, God. We lift them up to you. You see them in their pain, God. You see those who are addicted that need to be delivered, God, that need salvation, God. You see the hearts. So we're lifting those people up to you right now. We're lifting up the people who are, um, that need your forgiveness, God, your redemption, your forgiveness of sin, God, your removal of sin. We lift them up to you, God. We lift up those who are sick, Lord, for Kelly right now who's at the ER, God, and needs a healing touch. And John who has recently had a cancer diagnosis. Or those who are struggling, God, for breath with COVID, God. And those who are scheduled for surgery even tomorrow and this week, God, we cry out to you and thank you that that by your stripes they are healed, God. That is the word of the Lord. We thank you, God. And now we thank you for the blood that was shed for the forgiveness of sins and your body that was crushed and bruised. God, we thank you that you are near to the brokenhearted. You are near to the bruised, God. And so we thank you for these elements, God, the, the blood and the, and, the, and the bread, God. We thank you, and we do this in remembrance of you, God. We let you arise, God. We are giving you the opportunity to see revival in our land, in our hearts, God. No matter where we are, God, we say yes and amen. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. take of the bread together church we receive God the strength that you provide your body was beaten for our benefit for our help for our health and Lord we thank you Take of the cup together. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, for your cleansing. We do this in remembrance of you. And as the psalmist was so delighted when your people rejoiced God we want to rejoice in you and we want to give you praise and we want to declare your goodness we want to praise you today Lord for you are truly truly worthy of it thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah praise you Father praise things before we stand and close. Uh, one, I'd like to encourage you to join with me to pray for our
new president and vice president in Congress, Supreme Court, especially during these next 100 days. Uh, I've begun to pray for our president the, 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 the day that he was, uh, Biden, the day that he was in, inaugurated. And uh, the scripture tells us to do so. And there's a lot of decisions that are made in the first hundred days. And we want to pray that God's will would be done. We want to pray that righteousness would reign and that God would be honored in the life of our president, our vice president in Congress. That would be our, pray that would be our prayer. We are told to do this, that we might be able to live peaceable and quiet lives. And if you haven't started already, I invite you to join with me as we're going to pray earnestly to say, God, help our leaders. Help our leaders as we move forward as a nation. And so I encourage you to do that. And, and if you haven't started, I would ask that you pray a couple times a day until you get caught up and then do it every day after that for the next hundred days. We're saying, God, help us. Help us work and have your way in our lives. Let's worship the Lord. If you need prayer before you leave, Barb will be up here. She'd be glad to pray with you and encourage you before you leave this morning. But let us just praise him and thank him for his great grace. Amen. God arise. Would you say that with me? Let God arise. God bless you. Go with the Lord. Amen.